I'm very lucky. I have a hedge maze in my garden. This is my hedge maze. I'm one of 37 twins, and we currently have a, an infestation of maze makers in my garden. I'm the only survivor. I've come to Kluch to uh, tell you all about mazes and how they are crucial to the happiness of mankind. Now, I've been traveling around the world for 47 years, creating intense acts of creation. And I find building mazes certainly gives me the chance of intense acts of creation. And I want to share what this has to mean to us. When I was a boy, I was fascinated by puzzles and networks. Um, I studied Latin. On one occasion, I was designing a cops and robbers game, board game during a Latin lesson. And to his great credit, my Latin teacher, Mr. Corbett, only tore it in half, because he was kind, and he knew I could stick it together again. And he knew, really, I wanted to design cops and robbers games. When I was a boy, we used to make rafts on the rivers, build tree houses, make aerial runways. I even built a hedge maze in the garden. These are the sort of things that fascinated me. And rather than a life of academia, I went and worked in industry, in printing, telephone exchanges, undersea cable industries. My work was to review production methods and improve productivity. And this is everything you do in life seems to be valuable. I couldn't see how, because I knew there was more for me to discover. I wanted to jump into the cold, icy water and go around the world creating mazes. Now, why do we find mazes so compelling? Well, as children, we all want to explore the world around us. We want to discover what's forbidden and out of sight. Could this playful spirit also transform our working lives? I've built over 700 mazes around the world, and these are built in all kinds of uh, styles. These are examples of corn mazes where you can have a wonderful pictorial picture, in this case, uh, of a sailing ship. Um, you can build them out of all sorts of materials. This one is, a, in Finland, of a wooden panel maze. It's an intense act of creation. Now, my work isn't entirely playful. Uh, it's not quite like play. I part-built maze. Can't, you can't just build half a sand castle, be led away to drink a beaker of orange juice, and never come back. No, you've got to come back. Otherwise, at least, not least, you don't get paid, so you must finish the project. And another thing, you can't just have a pretend bridge. It's got to be real and strong and safe. So apart from that, most of the attributes of play remain in my life. And that's because every project I do is a unique beginning, middle, end, start, finish, objective, and deliver. And that approach means that I'm constantly varied in terms of what I do, who I meet. I'm the ultimate bee that's cross-pollinating between different flowers, different cultures, different kinds of organizations. I jump from silo to silo at a time when we need more jumping from silo to silo. I can point out things that work in museums that might be appropriate to a science center or a zoo or a historic house or an airport. Other than that, my whole lifetime is intense acts of creation. It's hugely, play hugely playful, and the more playful I am, the more effective I am. I mean, I'm working with a client, and it's rather like a painter. I have to get, get to know the person as if they're sitting for a portrait. And until we understand each other, he trusts me and I trust them, and then we share the sense of humor over a meal or whatever. Then he smiles, and now I can capture it with my paintbrush. And until then, we don't have that spark of creativity. And in fact, it's more like an arch. I don't know what we're going to create, nor does the client. It's two halves of an arch. If either falls, we fail. Together, we do something neither of us knew was coming. And that's one of the excitements. It's completely unknown territory every week of my working life. Now, here we go. Now, in 1981, at Gray's Court in England, uh, my late colleague, Randall Cote, and I designed the Archbishop's Maze for Lady Brunner. She was, um, she was warm to the project, and she thought it'd be great to build a hedge maze, uh, maze in her garden. She insisted that everybody thinks should be done by people on her estate. 
She referred to Henry V in Shakespeare's description of the Battle of Agincourt as our band of brothers. For example, the apprentice in the forge made the sundial here. He used the biggest oil drum to make the biggest ring. It was good, but it was hardly the most beautiful or most accurate sundial. But for Lady Brunner, the act of creation and the spirit of her team was the most important thing. And then she invited Dr. Robert Runcie, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he came and dedicated this Christian maze. Randall went I, and I went on to create 15 mazes together in magnificent landscapes sometimes. This is at Blenheim Palace, and we built a maze at Leeds Castle, which is in Kent, and the idea was the castle would draw more visitors if we had the maze to take up the public, uh, rather than all being in the castle. The design of the maze is symbolic like this, and then underneath the tower is a grotto. We also created the Beatles maze in Liverpool, and the exciting thing about the Beatles maze was you know, it, the unrecognizable yellow submarine, and so therefore we created a submarine in the middle of the maze. We take stories, like the story of Alice in Wonderland. Now see this hedge maze here, and I tell you it's about Alice in Wonderland, but let's look at the design. The design abounds in symbolism. Who here can see Alice, the Mad Hatter, the rabbit, the Cheshire cat, the queen, the mock turtle, the griffin, the dodo, and a white teapot and a st in the middle a mound with the clock telling the time, four o'clock, which in England is tea time. <laughs> right, we go to Schoon Palace, in, and for 400 years the kings of Scotland were crowned at Schoon, so it's a very special place. And we built the hedge maze in the foreground uh, a few years ago. And the Murray star uh, is in the shape of the five-pointed heraldic star of the um, Murray family. And it's, it's also got woven copper and green beech hedges to look like um, the tartan of, and so on, which is the first time we used two colors of hedges. Now, the Chateau de Toire in France has perfect proportions. And on, it's precisely aligned to the midsummer solstice. So, Paul de la Panus, the Viscount, was very keen to have something really symbolic. And we created a wonderful symbolic maze with nine bridges, which creates an incredible three-dimensional network. Now, at Speak Hall in England, one of the finest half-timbered houses, we built a hedge maze with lots of bridges. And we also had gates you can move, so you can change the design of the maze from moment to moment, a different design every day of the week. So, using decorative maze gates, secret arbors, and distinctive art. Now, the back one. On the right, we see a piece of art that's denoting the Minotaur, for you to discover, if you can. And you expect to find Minotaurs in mazes, of course. And here we have my artistic response to COVID, where two foresters are wrapping up for a storm. I painted this in February 2020. We knew COVID was coming, but didn't know how serious or how long or how powerful it would be. So they're wrapping up, one up, one upside down like Jack's on a playing card, waiting, bracing for the storm, and so on. So thus, thus we make the maze more exciting. Now, this art has a lot to say about Kluch and why I'm here. We created a book, Blue and Yellow, Hope for Ukraine, coloring books, and this is uh, little Valeria, who colored the entire book and put this up, and they'll be given to Ukrainian refugee children in Kluch across Romania and Eastern Europe. Moving on, we have Three Lands Point, where the countries of Belgium, Germany, and the Netherlands meet. One three-pointed uh, design, three bridges in it, three rows of fountains. This changes the design of the maze as a puzzle from moment to moment as they rise and fall. Another way to use water is a waterfall, a water spectacular way to walk through into a maze. You walk up to it, and it magically parts as you approach and you feel very brave about it. Sometimes the entire maze is used with walls of water, as here. And it looks popular by day, and also compelling by night. In Singapore Airport, we created two mazes, the jewel um, here with the waterfalls, and Moshe Safdie was the architect who designed it. 
uh, the, the whole building, and I planned for all the hedges to go into the small trenches and troughs. Uh, you had to keep the weight of the soil right down. And thus we have the world's greatest, first un indoor hedge maze, and also a mirror maze. The largest maze in the world when it was built was in Ningbo in China, using three different colors of uh, bushes for the butterflies, and also it has a wonderful tower in the middle. An even bigger tower is in Dubai, 600 uh, feet high and 55 floors. So unless you're Spiderman, don't attempt it. Um, in my own garden in England, I have a smaller tower, but inside it looks even bigger than outside and in different coloring as well. And here we are building it, and here's my construction team. Again, another intense act of creation by our happy and talented team. Now, mirror mazes um, are mostly imaginary journeys through sheets of glass, as you can see here. And it looks six times bigger than it really is. Now, here's a test. Take three triplets, put them in a the mirror maze, and hooray, you get 18. So a mirror maze looks six times bigger than it really is, and this experiment demonstrates it. At Kentwell Hall, a historic property, we celebrated 500 years of Tudor uh, uh, history with the Tudor rose maze in paving, and we use paving in other ways for the distinctive labyrinth in Chechia, in Bath, with mosaic, and more mosaic, and there's the Bath Festival maze. Now, my land is your canvas, or my, it's, it's my canvas, and here I am with a project in England, working out where to put it in the landscape, deciding the design that should go down, and then we start putting the shape onto the landscape. And we build, and we build, and finally we have a final result of a path of life, and the proud owners here cutting the ribbons, and sculpture chosen with bronze castings in it and everything else. So off we go, and quickly we draw a conclusion to this talk. What is the essence of a maze experience? It's doing things together in a beautiful place, human humanly and face to face, coming out together, walking tall, and feeling better about ourselves and each other. And I think I've got the best job in the world for life, and I wish each of us do have, too. Um, I, your life is your furrow, only you can plow it. So there's only one seat on the tractor in the driver's seat, yours. So let each of us have the best job in the world, give us fulfillment to spread better experiences to the lives of others. Let us truly celebrate our humanity through intense acts of creation.